got my wool here. Take all of this out. So all I need for the fletchling is the um, the brown black. And um, ideally you will have made your robin first. So you will already have an orange and um, red um, and yellow mix. But I will show you how to mix this um, just so that you know what you what you need to have. And then you've got your white wool and you need to split that roughly into half. So if you split that into half, um, it is really, it's not rocket science, just split it so that you've got roughly half of each quantity. And you could um, already keep a little bit just to one side for the nest, nest padding there. So um, I think that's pretty much half. So I'm going to put the bits that I'm not using back in here. <coughs> And um, before I start, I will just show you how to mix this lovely red colour that's going onto the robin. So here goes. So this lovely colour here, that is a, um, um, a quite a natural colour, is slightly different actually. It depends on how much you put in into um, the mix. But in any case, you basically use your wools a tiny tiny wisp of the red it's really important the red is the least that you're using a little bit of this and a little bit of that and then you're going to mix these together and this might take a little while because you do want to give them like a really really good mix so make sure that you spend quite some time mixing these well. If you've got some mini carders, um, you can use those. What's in here? No, that's not mini carders. No, don't ha I haven't got any handy, otherwise I would have shown it to you. If you if you just got one carder, you can flick card it. Um, I think I've shown this before in one of the tutorials, so you can probably find that on there as well. Um, flick carding means you have one carder in one hand and you just flick the wool off it and it sort of gets caught on it and mixes. If you've got two carders, you brush them against each other in opposite directions so that you uh, transfer the wool from one carder to the other and in the process you mix the wool as well. But you can also do this by hand. Once you've got sort of a nice mix, it might be good just to split this in half because you really need to get um, it, an even orange colour or it won't be even even but you don't want uh, suddenly a red fleck and then a yellow fleck in there. You really want it to be a nice even colour mix um, so that it's a variegated colour, just as the robin has got the, his chest slightly variegated. There's nothing actually in nature or almost nothing in nature that's absolutely dead pun one colour. Everything has sort of a slight variegation in it. So this is why it's really good to mix your wool. Um, basically mix your wool because obviously the wool that we're using, a lot of it has been dyed. And dyeing it means that it becomes an even colour. So to put it back into nature, we sometimes just have to give it a little bit of a of a mixing um, to just make it look more natural again. I actually love that part because so many colours that you can't see until you start mixing them. Right, so that's a nice a nice colour for the robin's chest. And um, and if you find that it's too yellow, then add a bit more orange. If you find it needs a bit more red, then add a bit more red. But I'm quite happy with this. So this is from not mixing it too much to mixing it really thoroughly. You can see the difference. You really want that kind of mix where there's nothing sort of uh, popping out at you. And then for the for the fletchling, you literally just need the tiniest tiniest of wisps. So I'm gonna put that to one side. This is what I've mixed. This is what I've got left. You will have lots of wool left after you've made that robin, um, because the robin it himself doesn't actually take that much um, of the wool either. So put that in your stash because these stashes will come really handy, especially um, as we are doing um, quite a lot of stash buster tutorials over the next few months. So now I'm going to follow the instructions because that's always wise in my case. So first of all, you've got your split wool here and um, and um, yes, so I've already taken a bit off to use for the nest. That's what's it telling me here. Then split off just over one quarter. So I've got to put that to one side. 
So I've got, um, let's, let's split off just so if I split, so to say that's one quarter, two quarter, three quarter. So I'm, um, I'm split off just over one quarter. So I put one quarter to one side. Yeah. Um, and then um, you make, um, you find the largest quantity if you've got bits of wools, like that, lay it out. so that they all get on top of each other, go on top of each other. And in the Robin instructions, so once you've made the Robin, it will be a lot easier because you will remember what you've actually done. So start off with a Robin in any case. And um, you need a, a 15 by 25 centimeter long <clears throat> and wide piece. So remember our tape measure here on the left hand side will help you to determine that. So it, I'm pulling it a bit longer than it is at the moment, 25 by 15, not bad. And then once you've got that um, shape, you're going to start rolling it in from all directions. When you roll your wool up, let's take these chocolates off so you don't get distracted by chocolates. When you um, roll the wool up, so I'm trying to have this so that you can see him I'm, what I'm heading for. You need to always make sure that you keep teasing the fibers out for as long as you can and also make sure that you tuck the sides in because you're trying to get to a 10 centimeter long shape here now. So what was the width of that sheet is now becoming the length of your little bird. So make sure that you um, tuck the sides in, keep it nice and tight and always tease out the very last ends so you get um, as many wraps on your shape as possible. And only when you get to the very last wispy bits that is when you take your felting needle and you're going to stab it into the last wispy ends. This is also how the robin starts out, so the, the adult robin bird. And you just stab that down um, and then you felt the shape all over in order to firm the shape up but also make it as round as you can. So we really want to get almost to um, a ball shape, a round shape. So I'm stabbing all over in here at the moment and I'm right now I'm using my coarse felting needle. Um, remember that our makers boxes only come with tools on the very first box that you're getting or subsequent boxes if you subscribe they will not have the tools in. However if you buy them as a one-off kit they will have the tools in every, every time you buy it because you're not subscribing you're just buying it as a one-off kit. So that's actually quite um, a good deal. Um, after that. Right, let's felt this down and in fact I've got to check that actually, that is a good point. I'm going to check that out um, if that is the case with a, with a tool, so just don't, don't take my word for it yet, I will check it out. Okay, so I'm stabbing this down now. In, in to get it into a round shape. Of course, if you've got a felting mat, you can rest it on your felting mat. You don't have to do this holding in your hand. Um, you can rest it and then stab it down and get it into as round a shape as possible. So once you've done that, um, and uh, the diameter of this should be about six centimeters. So um, it's probably still a little bit on the on the big side. Let's just have a check. No, no, it's not too bad actually. That that that's that's good. Let's stick with that. Give it a bit of a swirl. We'll get a round, nice round shape here. And then the next thing you're going to do is that one quarter of wool that you've put to one side. Um, so you um, take the 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 wool that you've put to one side, which it should be about two to three grams, and split into half. And then you roll one half and into a ball shape, the same as you did before, but this time a lot smaller. So we're doing exactly the same again, teasing the wool out, rolling it in on itself, and making a, like a small version of the body that I've just made, slightly larger, felt the ends in, so it holds its own shape. Then stab all over and to make it a little bit firmer and rounder. And it should measure about three centimeters in diameter. So we can check that out as well. 
it's actually perfect. I'm, I'm well impressed with my own measurements here. It's definitely working to plan. So once you've done this, you are going to position this onto the bird, bird's body. This, at this point, it might look a bit like a sheep or, um, I don't know, like a duck at some point. Um, just ignore all of that. That's just what happens when you needle felt. And all you're going to do is you fasten this um, just into the shape by um, stabbing into the wispy ends of the smaller ball and going right into the main shape of the larger ball. This is just to tack it on. This is not how it's, it will stay. We're just literally tacking it on to the shape. And, um, and then the next thing that will happen is you're going to fasten it on properly by using the other half of that head wool, flattening that out, and now that will dress the bird all the way around. So um, you might find that you've got a bit too much. There definitely won't be too little, but just uh, work in smaller quantities because you can always add more. And all you're doing now is you're, can you see how that is suddenly a bird shape? So what looked like a, um, um, a weird, maybe sheep or something like that before, becomes a bird by just splitting this over the shape. Now, the important thing is when you split this and, and wrap this over the shape, you need to keep it nice and taut. And initially, all you're doing is felting it on around the body. So you're ignoring where the head is completely, just felt it on around the body because we don't want to follow that, um, that, that shape of the head at the moment. We just want to make sure that it's all fastened on first, nice and taut. Fasten the whole thing on, follow the shape round and felt it firmly onto the body shape only at the moment, okay? So get all the wispy ends felted in, ignore the head part, So once that is done, and this is the head, this is the rest of the bird, then you're going to um, fasten the wool now onto this part where the head is, but you're going in at a shallow angle. So you're not following that groove necessarily. You're going in at a shallow angle, which fastens the wool on, but it also um, makes the, the head less distinct from the rest of the body. So we don't want there to be like a blob on the top. Um, as, as it looked earlier. So and to achieve that, you go in at a shallow angle and felt the wool, um, the, the, the soft wool, the sheet that you put on down flat against the flat along the body and along the head. So just keep stabbing the wool in. It might take a little while for it all to um, sort of get neatened out and the creases to disappear, but you um, you will get there in the end. And what will help you a lot is that on the Robin template, on the Robin instructions, you've actually got a template that you can follow. So if you've got this template, this is where you're heading. So if you look at this now, I can see that this needs to be felted in a little bit more here, but otherwise it doesn't look bad at all. So you can sculpt it, but at the same time, you can um, fasten on that soft sheet that you laid over the head. You can fasten that on by stabbing um, at a shallow angle into the bird. There we go. That's it. So once you've got the shape, um, of, of the bird and, and they're sort of like, they're really uh, uh, woolly balls really, especially the little fledglings, they're quite, they're quite compact, um, which is um, also distinct by not giving them like a very long tail. They don't have long tails at this point. Um, a fledgling, by the way, is a bird that has left the nest, um, but isn't like, it's not, um, it's not flying around yet. It's, it's learning to fly. So it's likely the ones that you find on the ground um, where you worry and you want to pick them up, but don't pick them up because it's often that the mother is not very far away. It's especially important coming up to this time of the year 
um, where little birds will soon be out and about. So don't pick them up. Um, many people make the mistake of picking them up and then they basically they can't be put back with a mum. The mum is usually there or the dad and um, just just waiting for you to, to hop it so that they can come back. So from now on, you will be colouring the robin in. For this, you need to always lay the wool fibres out as the natural feathers would run mostly from the front to the back of the bird. So we're always working in this direction. Start by using a wisp of the brown black wool and lay onto the top of the head and felt down. Um, so they're, they're quite speckled, these little fletchlings, the little robin fletchlings. They almost reminded me a little bit when I looked looked at pictures of a, of a thrush like a grown thrush. So once you um, lay the wool down, then you just felt it on and keep it quite quite um, um, thin and wispy. So felt that down. Even though you're only covering it with, um, with this uh, brown black wool, it's actually, it takes longer than you think it does because you want to do it in a symmetrical fashion. So you don't want to have like a really thick part on one side and then um, not such a thick part um, on, on the other. So you're working your way from the top down the sides. So always working in the direction of where, or even stab in that direction, how the feathers run. It just helps um, with the overall appearance of the shape so that you the needle stabs are even in that direction. And then you do that. If, if the wool's too fat or uh, too clumpy, then just take little wispy bits and smooth them out and then put them down um, separately, teasing the wool out. Like you mix the wool, you can also make the wool nice and neat again, even if it's just a single colour. So you're working your way still towards the end. of the bird and always check for symmetry. This is important. So at the moment it looks fairly sym symmetrical from the front. You always look at it from right from the back or right from the front for symmetry. And, um, and then you're going to mix a little brown black with a white. So a little bit of the white that you've put to one side into a mottled grey mix. So that um, that will become the tail now. So you just mix that into a mottled mix, which basically means that you're not mixing it too thoroughly. Mottled always means less, less even, a less even mix. Just using a bit more darker colour. Felt onto the back of the fledgling so that a tiny bit of tail sticks out and then felt the tail down from the flat, from the top flat on your mat about one centimeter long, then turn over and felt from the underneath too. So that looks like that now. So you put the wool down, have a nice transition and, um, and felt it down. So that it sticks out a little bit beyond the bird here. So you can see that. And then you can felt it flat from the top into your felting mat so it's only a tiny tail and then remember when you felt anything flat on your mat you have to gently lift it off and then turn it around and felt from the other side as well so you you really just want there to be like a stubby little tail nothing like the robin that has got um, quite a long uh, fan tail this one is just a little tail in the making and Felt it from the top again. To um, smooth the fibres out a little bit more, you could change to your uh, medium needle. Um, I'm always a little bit, um, I'm always open when I when I um, suggest the needles because a um, a, a coarse needle uh, from our basic needle range is much coarser than a coarse needle. It's the same diameter, but somehow the the way that it's manufactured is a lot more rough. And so um, a coarse needle that is a, a, a twisted needle, um, you can work with it much longer, whereas one of the basic needles, you might have to go to a, a medium need needle sooner. I always say just, just work it out. So all I'm doing now is I'm just going to transition that um, 
that back bit here on the back a little bit more. Um, to be honest, a lot of it you, you're going to make, you continue working on, on the cover because you do want it to be nice and mottled. So then um, you are going to use wisps of the orange. So the, the side of the, um, the wings need to be uh, pulled down a bit and you can give it um, um, more of a distinct wing, wing look if you haven't done that yet. If bits of the white shine through, that's absolutely fine. Um, so the, 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 we're not giving him separate wings because his wings are, as, as with the tail, they're not particularly developed, developed yet. So you don't, you're just giving him a, um, a bit of a hint of wings. And on this side as well, just make sure the main thing is that you keep this symmetrical and then you are going to color in um, the face a bit more with uh, a, the gray mix as well. So at the moment he's got a very white face, but we're going to make a bit more of this gray mix, mottled mix and color that in a little bit more. Around the sides here. I did consider making him like a ginormous mouse where he was like asking for food but I thought oh my goodness that will make it a more complicated project than the actual robin so I thought no let's just make it a very simple bird so that everybody can um, have a success there uh, by all means look at a, um, a real um, like an image of a of a real fletchling, robin fletchling. They are obviously, um, they change so much, so you might find them in different stages of speckledness, if, if, if that's a word. And um, you can color them in all around a bit more. Um, you, so the next thing is that you're actually using the gray and the orange and gray. So if you haven't got any gray left, then just mix it straight in with the orange. You're going to give them again at different stages their chest becomes more orange so it depends at which stage they're at they might have a, um, a more of a speckled chest or they might already have a lot more of the orange showing there's a bit um you you can almost design your own little fletchling there so you can have it more distinct like a robin or you can make it less um, red on the chest. In any case, where their red patches start is usually here on the side. So that's where you need to have the, um, the orange showing a lot more than um, you would say on the chest. So you wouldn't have it on the chest and not on the side. That's what I'm saying, because that's where the color, it almost seeps in from the sides towards the chest as they get older. And, um, and then you just need to make sure that the shape is all nice and neat because if we work at one end, you are always bound to um, distort some other parts. So keep it nice and round, like a fluffy round little chick. We don't want it to be a bullet flying through the air. And uh, because he's sitting on his tummy, you also need to make sure that he's flat, flattish on his tummy. So he's he looks like a nicely sort of colored um, colored in um, little robin there now. Um, you can add more of the colors and more speckledness if you like. Now the main thing is I'm going to show you how to insert the eyes and the beak. And um, again if you're following the instructions do the robin first but um, the, um, mostly it tells you in the robin instructions how to do it. So I'm going to give him the smaller beak and the um, two eyes obviously and so um, to insert the um, I think I've, I've done the beak first on the robin instructions I will just double check beak first and eyes yes doesn't matter if you do it the other way around but to insert the beak just make a hole right in the middle look at look at him from the front make a hole with your felting needle by going all the way in Give it a bit of a jiggle, only when the needle is literally um, all the way in, and then insert the beak. Yeah. Um, and then you use a dab of glue. Mm. Which, have I got glue here? Come on, please, let there be glue here. Yes, there is glue here. So you just use a dab of glue 
um, behind the beak. It's not coming out, yes it is. Push the beak back in and just leave it for now um, to dry. You can um, make the transition from the beak to the um, to the face um, once the beak is dried in. And then you make one hole, one side for the eye. One eye, get that in. And then make the hole for the other side. Make sure it's in the same, the same height, same level. And then um, check that the eyes are symmetrical. And if they are, then you're going to take your dab, um, another dab of glue behind the eye. It's definitely um, a tight squeeze to get this glue out. And then push it back in. So what you're not doing is you're not taking the eye or the beak out again to add the glue that's staying in there. Once you've done that, you can sort of assess your little bird and you might find, oh, he's not that symmetrical. You know, I need a bit more of the black here or there. Um, there is yet um, another detail to come around the eyes because you're adding a little bit of an eyelid around the eye by um, twisting the white wisps of the white wool into a strand. So you do that between your fingers and then you just felt that around the eye, starting at one end, one end, going all the way around. And it can sort of almost like be really close to the eye, almost like because it's an eyelid, you want it to be really snug to the eye, even slightly overlapping it. Um, and then you've got a, a quite a realistic look there. And to transition the beak from, from it being glued in so it doesn't look stuck on, again, you can just use a tiny bit of, um, of wool and felt that um, once it's dry, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this obviously beforehand, and felt that onto the face and make sure that you've got a symmetry going. My symmetry isn't great here, but you can still add wisps of wool here and there and felt it down even when the eyes are in and obviously repeat that eyelid on the other side as well. And that's basically just a really quick um, way to show you how to make the fletchling. If you're watching this um, any time in the future and you are wanting to make a basic bird, bird shape, then this will help you too um, in, in making a basic bird shape. So not just, you can make them in all colours if you like, it doesn't have to be just a robin fletchling, it's quite a good way of how to make a basic um, shape of a bird of whatever kind you want to make, even if you design your own. And um, and that's basically it. Little fletchling made in a, quite a short time. He can join all his little siblings now. Um, there's three now. She's going to be a busy Robin mum. And of course, as always, they're always different. Different sizes always look different. That's just how it goes. Right.